What is going on, everybody? It's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So the markets just closed two minutes ago. And in this video, we have two stocks to break down that collapsed today, which I'm sure you guys might have an idea of what two stocks these are. But if you don't, no worries. We're going to break them down in this video, the charts, and most importantly, why the stocks collapse today. So if you all find value, hit the like button, make sure to subscribe and check out my Patreon. If you guys want to be a part of the discord, see my charts and ideas throughout the week. And most importantly, if you guys want to see me build out my private portfolio, you get to see all the buys, the sales, the returns, everything I'm doing every single week in that portfolio is on Patreon down below. Check the link right here or simply go to stasurfest.com slash Patreon. And with that, being said guys cheers let's get into it so overall the markets did pretty decent today not the best day but also not the worst day either we had the russell down about 0.1 percent on the day the s p went up around 0.1 percent as the nasdaq went up 0.4 percent and we had the dow jones down about half a percent which the dow led the losses and usually that is not the case. But now the Dow's at 38,000, roughly 800 points, down about 1,200 points from the recent 40,000 point all time high. So a pretty mixed bag in the overall stock market today, guys. Nothing crazy. The VIX actually went up around 4%, which I think is a good sign. Um, I hate when the VIX is anywhere near all time lows, and now we're pretty much right at the all-time low, 8 to 10 to 12 points. That's, you know, the, the lower end of the range, historically speaking, here on the VIX. So I do think we might be in store for a spike in volatility, maybe at some point here in the short term. But we're not going to get into that in this video, guys. We have two stocks to go over, which, like I said, man, they got hit today. So the first one that we're going to cover is... DraftKings, ticker symbol DKNG, which went down a whopping 10.3% on the day. Essentially, it got into correction territory in one day, and now we're down from the $49 high. Hold on a second. We might be in a bear market. Wait a second here, guys. So from $49.70 down to about $36. Yeah, we're down 27% from that recent high, or in other words, we're in a bear market. So let me actually pop this article up so we can get an idea of what is going on here with DraftKings, right? Well, actually, the first one here is, uh, well, we're going to talk about that in a second. The first article I had pulled up is for the next stock that we're going to get into, guys, which you might have an idea what the second stock on the list is. But number one here, again, is DraftKings. So DraftKings and FanDuel parent company flutter entertainment which we'll take a look at that chart in a second as well these ended up selling off today pretty wildly as they face an 140 percent hike in taxes on online sports bets in a new budget approved by the illinois state over the weekend both DraftKings and flutter fell in tuesday stock market action like i just showed you guys with DraftKings. And they're actually extending their losses uh, from last week, which last week wasn't the best. So check this out, guys. In a Tuesday analyst note, BTIG said it expects DraftKings and Flutter to pay 36% and 37% tax rates, respectively, on gross gaming revenue under the state's 2025 budget. That would amount to a tax hike of 140% to 147% compared to the current tax rate of 15%. That is insane, guys. So in other words, the state of Illinois, yeah, they want their piece of the pie. They were already getting a decent piece. Now they want Almost half the pie, guys. They want a lot more, uh, you know, in terms of taxes. And BTIG added that it anticipates that the online sports betting firms can offset the tax hike by implementing cost controls. As you guys know, these businesses, DraftKings, Flutter, FanDuel, which again, Flutter's the, you know, the parent company of Fla uh, FanDuel, FanDuel, right? These businesses spend so much money, a disgusting amount of money on advertising, promotions, this, that, the third, to get people onto the platforms and keep people on 
to the platforms or on the platforms, right? So that is the big news here when it comes to DraftKings. No need to get deeper into that. Uh, but yeah, that's essentially what we're seeing. And who knows, man, maybe other states are going to follow suit. Maybe that's kind of the speculation here in the stock, why it's actually uh, tanking arguably more than it should, or maybe it's justified. I don't know. What do you guys think? But we can see here, now we're getting a much needed sell off. The stock was a little bit too hot, let's be honest, in the mid high 40s. And it looks like the uptrend is still looking decent. On the yearly chart, we're holding an uptrend. You guys can see right here, boom, we're at the bottom of the channel right now. So let's see, man. Maybe as the dust settles, this could end up opening up as a decent swing trade. Would I long-term invest in a company like DraftKings? Personally, no. I'm not a big fan of the betting space. I don't want to really invest in that space. Too many players, too much competition, way too much costs in terms of advertising. Um, I don't know. I can't really see these businesses being crazy profitable in the future. I could be wrong. <clears throat> I don't know. But DraftKings is stock number one and stock number two, guys, which I actually had one of these yesterday. Celsius, ticker symbol C-E-L-H. And let me add this. I had one yesterday for the first time in months, and that's the first energy drink I've had in months, pretty much. And guys, let me tell you, man, what the heck do they put in these energy drinks? I felt like I was jacked through the roof on caffeine, and quite frankly, guys, it felt like I was on something more than caffeine, which I'm not one of those, uh, you know, guys, if you know what I mean, but it kind of felt like that's what that would feel like, but... Either way, we're not going to get into that <laughs> in this video, guys. All I'm saying is, what the heck are in these energy drinks, man? I felt like I could run through a freaking wall yesterday. I'll stick to the coffee, guys. Cheers, by the way. Got my coffee right here. But yeah, energy drinks, of course, are very popular. Celsius being arguably the most popular one right now. And we got news that, well, their sales might be compressing a little bit. And their stock went down 13% on the day, which is actually a pretty bad day for a stock, for any stock. So let's see here what's going on, guys. So shares of Celsius plunged as much as 15% today after Morgan Stanley analysts said data showed the company's year-on-year -year sales growth slowed on a sequential basis. And its latest note, the bank Morgan Stanley revealed Celsius's market share, excluding powders, <laughs> which is funny that they uh, mentioned that, declined sequentially because it seems like that's what they put in their freaking drinks, if you guys know what I'm saying. Uh, so <laughs> Celsius's market share, excluding powders, declined sequentially from 10.8% three weeks ago to 10.5% in the latest week, although its share is higher in other services such as Costco and Amazon. And Celsius' percentage sales on promotion increased sequentially in the last three weeks, with Celsius pricing down negative 7% year, uh, year on year in the latest two weeks, said Morgan Stanley analyst. And Celsius' velocity was down about 4% year over year in the latest week and minus 1% for the L4W, which I'm not actually sure what that means, uh, with two-year average velocity growth plus HSD reflecting strong year-ago growth. Morgan Stanley maintained an equal weight rating and a $75 per share price target on Celsius. Analysts noted the robust runway for the company in the U.S. from increasing items per store, improving placements in coolers, and growth in non-tracked channels. However, they also believe the company has difficult comparisons over the next several quarters as it cycles the distribution and velocity growth since the PepsiCo distribution began. And Morgan Stanley concluded that there is a balanced risk-reward from here after the stock, or uh, excuse me, after the recent stock run. So keep that in mind, balanced risk-reward so it could go either way, really. So it's not like the stock's at $10 where it would be way more reward than risk. It's up a ton, guys. We're pretty much at all-time highs right now. But it doesn't mean that we can't run again. You guys can see now we are starting to see some buyers come in right above this 180 moving average on the four-hour chart here on Celsius, which technically, I mean, look, if we extend this to the right, 
we're actually still holding an uptrend, guys. We're actually at a higher low right here. So who knows, man, if we rally and start breaking the mid 80s again, which was resistance in the middle of April, this could start taking off again. Who knows? So what do you guys think about Celsius, about the other stock? I'm forgetting. What the heck was it again? Uh, <laughs> DraftKings, my mind is freaking everywhere, guys. Uh, probably from that Celsius yesterday. But yeah, man, Celsius and DraftKings, those are two stocks I'm watching. I do not own them. I'm not looking to invest in them long term, but as trades, I'm watching them. So what do you guys think? Smash the like button. Make sure to subscribe and check out the Patreon if you guys want to see me build out my portfolio, see my Discord chat or be in the Discord chat and see my charts and ideas throughout the day, throughout the week. All of that's on Patreon down below. Go to StassurFest.com slash Patreon or simply check the QR code out right here and I'll see you in there, guys. Peace out.